All right, in this video, we're going to talk about complex zeros of a polynomial and factoring when we have complex zeros. Okay, so let's start with the conjugate zeros there. If f of x is a polynomial with real coefficients, and if some complex number is a zero of f of x, then so is its complex conjugate. So let's see an example. So here f of x is x squared plus 4. Let's find the zeros of f of x. So this is a polynomial, and the coefficients are real numbers. So the coefficient of x squared is 1, and this 4, that's a real number as well. So we find the zeros, we get x squared plus 4 equals 0, uh, x squared equals negative 4, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which is plus or minus 2i. Okay, so the zeros of this one are x equals 2i and negative 2i, and those two are complex conjugates of one another. Okay, so um, whenever we have a complex number that is a zero of a polynomial with real coefficients, its complex conjugate is also going to be a zero. Okay, let's do this example here. So we want to write a polynomial function of minimum degree in standard form with real coefficients whose zeros include 2 and 1 minus 3i. Okay, so, well, since 2 is a 0, we know that x minus 2 is going to be a factor. And of minimum degree means the smallest, we'll use the smallest uh, power here, the smallest multiplicity possible, and that's going to be 1. All right, since 1 minus 3i is a 0, x minus that is going to be a factor. However, from the conjugate zeros theorem, since 1 minus 3i is a 0, then 1 plus 3i is also a 0. So that means that we have a factor again, well, a third factor of x minus this 0. So parentheses, 1 plus 3i. Okay, so since this has to be a polynomial function in standard form with real coefficients, we have to multiply this out. So let's start with the last two. Okay, so we will take the first term of each. We get x squared. Then we do the outside. So it's minus x times 1 plus 3i. Then we do the inside terms, so it's minus x times 1 minus 3i. Then it's going to be plus 1 minus 3i times 1 plus 3i. Okay, so again I'm treating this as one piece and this as one piece. So we have the first two multiplied, then this and the red one, so minus x times 1 plus 3i, then this red one and this x, so minus x times 1 minus 3i, then the two red ones multiplied, so minus a minus is a plus. Okay, so uh, we can clean this up here. We get uh, x squared. Um, distribute the minus x. So we get minus x times 1, or minus x. Then minus x times 3i, so minus 3ix. Again, distribute the minus x. So minus x times 1 is minus x. Then minus x times minus 3i is going to be plus 3ix. Then we have to FOIL these last two. So we get 1 times 1 which is 1, 1 times 3i, so plus 3i, negative 3i times 1, minus 3i, then minus 3i times 3i, so 3i quantity squared. Okay, so we clean this up here. We have minus 3ix plus 3ix, those go away, plus 3i, minus 3i, those go away. So, we get, combining like terms, we get x squared minus 2x plus that 1 
then minus 3i quantity squared. So we squared 3, we get 9, and i squared. Okay, so um, 9i squared is 9 times negative 1, which is negative 9. So we get x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus a minus 9. So it's plus 1 plus 9, so plus 10. All right, now we'll multiply the, uh, the x plus 2 there. And sorry, I meant x minus 2. So here we get x times x squared. We get x cubed minus 2x squared plus 10x minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 20. Okay, so we clean this up and we get f of x. So the answer to the question is f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 14x minus 20. Okay, let's do another example. So using the given zero, write a linear factorization of f of x. Okay, so a linear factorization means we're just gonna we're gonna factor f of x down into a bunch of linear terms. So here we have our polynomial and the zero is two minus i. So by the conjugate zeros theorem, we have another zero, which is gonna be two plus i. So right away we have two factors of f of x. So um, we have um, we have x minus this zero, so two minus i, and we have x minus this zero, two plus i. So since um, this one is a factor and this one is a factor, if I multiply these together, I get another factor of f of x. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use this fact to um, to get a quadratic that is a factor of f of x. So I multiply these two together. We get um, x squared, and then x times negative. 2 plus i, so minus x times 2 plus i, then um, minus 2 uh, minus the quantity 2 minus i times x, so we get minus x times 2 minus i, then minus a minus becomes a plus 2 minus i times 2 plus i. So we uh, multiply this here out, and we get uh, x squared minus 2x minus ix minus 2x plus ix. Then we FOIL this. We get 4 plus 2i minus 2i minus i squared. So we've got some stuff canceling here. The ix cancels, and the 2i's cancel. Um, also, i squared, that's negative 1. So here we have x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus a minus 1 gives us plus 1, so plus 5. All right, so what I have here is a quadratic that's a factor of my um, quartic. So the way I'm going to break it down, so remember we have these two factors, the way I'm going to continue to break it down is I'm going to take this quadratic and divide it in using long division. Okay, so we have x squared minus 4x plus 5 into this. So x squared times what is x to the fourth? That's going to be x squared. So then we multiply. Okay, we subtract. We get negative 5x cubed plus 4x cubed is negative x cubed. Negative 3x squared minus 5x squared is going to be minus 8x squared. And let's drop down the plus 43x. Okay, so then x squared times what is negative x cubed? That's going to be minus x. Okay, so we take this and we multiply. And now we subtract. And we bring down the minus 60. So x squared times what is negative 12x squared? That's going to be negative 12. 
So now we multiply this. And as we expected, we get a remainder of 0. Okay, so this is what we found so far. So let's go back and look at We had these two factors. So uh, let me write that down. We get x minus 2 minus i and x minus 2 plus i. and then times this quadratic here. And this last one we can factor by inspection. It's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 3. And then we have this bit here. So this here is the oops, that there is the uh, linear factorization of f of x. Okay, so one, again, just to recap here, um, what I could have done is I could have used synthetic division to break it down, but what I decided to do instead, because I think it's a little bit easier to deal with, is um, I wrote down x minus this 0 times x minus this 0, and I multiplied it out to get, um, to get a factor of f of x in this form. And then we divided that into f of x to uh, get the other piece of it, which is x squared minus x minus 12. And um, so here we get the linearization or the linear factorization of it. Okay, here's the last example. So I'm going to find all of the zeros of this cubic and use those to write a linear factorization of it. So um, what I'm going to notice that if I put 1 in for x, I get 2 plus 8 minus 10, which is 0. And so that means that 1 is a 0 of this, therefore x minus 1 is a factor and I'll use synthetic division to break it down. Okay, so the zero goes in the little uh, partial box there, and here we have our coefficients. So we bring down the two, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and we get a remainder of zero. So that means now that f of x is going to be equal to x minus one, that factor of one, times 2x squared plus 2x plus 10. Okay, so now we need to look at the, um, the zeros of this. I could factor a 2 out of here, but I'm not going to do that because um, sometimes you are left with a leading coefficient that you can't factor out, so I want to, to show you how to treat that. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula to find the zeros of this. All right, so we apply the quadratic formula, and we get this. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. So let's um, multiply this out here. So we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 80, all over 4. Okay, so we get here, we have the square root of negative 76, so we want to find a perfect square factor, the largest perfect square factor of 76, and that's going to be 4. So uh, we have negative 76 is equal to negative 4 times 19, so therefore for this we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 19. So just breaking down that 76 as negative 1 times 4 times 19, that's all over 4. So we get negative 2 plus or minus, that's i, and that's 2. So we get, so here, I'll write that down, so that's i, and that's 2. So we get 2i times the square root of 19, which uh, can't be broken down 
all over 4. And if we factor a 2 out of the numerator and cancel with the denominator, we get negative 1 plus or minus i root 19 all over 2. Or, writing it out, we have negative 1 half plus um, root 19 over 2i and negative 1 half minus root 19 over 2i. Okay, so here we are. We have this x minus 1 times this quadratic. These two are the zeros of this quadratic, so we can break them down as x minus the first zero, so negative 1 half plus root 19 over 2i times x minus the other zero, so minus root 19 over 2 I. Okay, so then we have um, times our x minus 1. But take a look here. If we were to multiply out the leading term in all these, we would get x cubed. So x times x times x, that's going to be x cubed. But our leading term needs to be 2x cubed. And so the way we can make the, um, the leading coefficient be what it should be is we just put it right out front. Okay, so here, f of x is equal to this. So once again, after we write down the factorization using the zeros, we take the leading coefficient in f of x, and we put it down in front there. Okay, so, uh, so that's how you, this is the final answer for that one.